All right, Moses joining me now for our first look at sports. And Moses, you might call these ladies acrobats on horses. Well, that might be the nicest, uh, I would say the nicest way, but one of the better ways. <laughs> these are trick riders who have been phenomenal athletes, by the way. And Lord knows I'm not going to be touching this with a 10-foot <laughs> pole. I am not as limble as these ladies are. Now, both demand a mental and physical aspect to it as you're dealing with an animal that weighs about a ton. And for two sisters out of Marwayne, they owe a lot to trick riding. But now they're hanging up the saddles after one last pro circuit. They've worked the rodeo circuit for 16 years. Lots of kids started out younger, but I started out when I was 15 and Amber was 13. When any trick rider um, starts out trick riding, they want to end up you know, going to the pro circuit and make it to a kind of an elite level. And Chris and I have had an awesome career. Now Amber and Krista Graham are gearing up for one last pro rodeo. And Amber's taking it quite well. I was like, aren't you getting really sad? But she's like, well, no, it's time. But it's good. We've had a lot of fun and it's good to go out while you're still kind of on top. The Graham sisters grew up on a ranch just minutes from Marwayne. It was there the two would share their love of horses, but it was actually one faithful summer that changed everything. She really wanted to learn how to trick ride, so my mom followed Jimmy Lou Irvine back to her uh, trailer after a chuck wagon race and asked if she'd give us some lessons. And Amber needed a partner, so I went along, and that's kind of how I got into it. We ended up following the lady back and getting some lessons, and Chris and I only had four real lessons before we performed at that same event the next year, and we just practiced every day. It took hours for both ladies to perfect their craft, albeit some more than others. Definitely tricks always came easier to Amber when we were first practicing and I struggled a bit more. Chris is way more flexible than me so she does different tricks than I do so between the two of us we kind of get all the tricks covered and complement each other. It's really important to stretch before and we should be stretching even afterwards because it's just not even the motion of pulling on it but also the torque of the horse's stride. So it's really easy to pull a groin or really any of your muscles if you're not prepared. So now they return to where it all began for one last time with family and friends looking on. The side of a running horse set to the arena floor, back up over the horn of your saddle. Nice job. We've had an awesome career, like all the places that we've got to travel and even like helping fund us through college and things like that. Like we've had a lot of opportunities with trick riding and. Yeah, I never really thought when we started that we'd go this far with it. So to finish off here is kind of special. Trick riding has definitely been uh, an asset to our life and something that, yeah, I'm very grateful for. And now a final goodbye to the sport, handing the mantle down to a new pair of trick riders. And to be trick riding with them now, it's kind of, we look back, we're like, oh my God goodness like that's what we always wanted and it's crazy that it's real. Bittersweet is a great way to put it. It's so sad that they're leaving because they are the best trick riders probably in the world and to learn from them is a dream come true. We can probably think of two better people to kind of carry on the legacy. All right moving on now the under 16 girls Prairie League softball regular season came to a close this weekend and the Lloydminster Liners are red hot winning three of their last four games looking for another W versus the St. Albert Angels. This one was scoreless until the second inning. Uh, liners with the bases loaded Jessica Callahoo will strike them out to get them out of the jam. Now third inning is actually when they start breaking it wide open. Liners Kiana Walker leads off with a double in the gap. To go to third, then on a pass ball, Lindsay Mayo will bring her in with a single. Two batters later, Talent Stevenson with a hit to right. That brings in two more. It's 3 0 after three. Now in four, the liners continue to pour it on. Walker again at the dish, driving the ball deep. That scores Shea Holzinger. Then it's going to be Mayo with a grounder. It'll fool Sydney Ford, and Walker will come home to score on the error. The liners would take a 6-0 lead. They would add five more in the fifth and win this game 11-0. They'd also beat Sherwood Park later in the day 6-3 to improve to 10-5 on the year. Now in the SPBL, the Northwest Prairie Pirates had a doubleheader Sunday in Regina to take on the Expos and the Pirates. Well, they dropped the first game 5-0 but came back to beat the Expos in the second half of the double dip for three. The Pirates' next action is June 18th versus the Saskatoon D-backs. Now, on the diamond tonight, it's a repeat of last year's NSRBL final. The Lloydminster Twins are taking on the defending champs, the Border City Blue Jays. This one at Legion Ball Park. First pitch is at 6. To lacrosse now, the Vermilion Roar entered Sunday's contest. Winners of five straight taking on the Edmonton Warriors. Picking up in the first period, tied at 2. Warriors power play. Dustin Herman with the backdoor goal untouched. It's 3-2 Warriors. They would soon double their lead. Cam Shelley, this one on another power play. He'll finish the give and go. It's now four to two. 
But Vermillion would roar right back, already down a goal, already with a goal. Ryder Zeroni with a quick release. Even the goalie didn't know it was in. Then with under a minute to go, it's Jarrett Iben who will find Zeroni for the natural hat trick to tie it up at four. They would get one more at the buzzer. Uh, this game would go back and forth, but the Warriors would end up winning this one by a score of 11 to nine.